That's a sea cucumber. Uh, class Crinoidea include things called sea lilies and sea feathers. Uh, sea lilies are typically sessile, uh, whereas sea feathers are more modal. They have very highly branched arms. Uh, that those uh, branches are called pinules, which make them look feather-like. Uh, they are filter feeders, so they don't necessarily feed with their mouths. And as I said, some are sessile, or they stay anchored in place. Uh, some actually have a stalk, and we can find uh, pieces of the stalk as they fossilize very well. So crinoid fossils are something that's uh, very common to find if you're out fossil hunting. Uh, but some are actually modal and move around. So here's an example of like a sea lily. You can see uh, it's hunkered down. It's got these very uh, dissected or branched uh, appendages, arms with the pinules on them. And here's another one. You can see very highly branched arms. All right, our last class of Echinodermata is the Concentricycloidea. Uh, this is another class that I'm presenting to you, uh, not because it is uh, economically important or because it is uh, very diverse, but because it's kind of strange and uh, very recently discovered, relatively speaking, uh, 1986. Only two species that are known, they're called sea daisies, they tend to be very small. Uh, they were discovered in uh, water over a kilometer deep near New Zealand. They have a very simple structure, they're called sea daisies. You can kind of see through my uh, text here what they look like, and you'll see that picture in a second. Uh, structure is fairly simple, uh, they're kind of just essentially a circle with a lot of little lobes around the outside. Uh, which are the tube feet. They don't have any arms. So here you can see some of these sea daisies with their tube feet extending around the outside, but still you can see they've got one, two, three, four, five part radial symmetry. So that's the concentric cycloidea. That is our last class of echinoderms. And next we'll be discussing chordates.